Directors, I'm Tim Gay. I represent District 3. This year I'm the chairman of the board. I want to introduce my other board members. Uh, director and board treasurer, oh, Rich isn't here, unfortunately. Rich Hartley is not here. He's our treasurer. Uh, director Ann McGuire represents Subdivision 2. Director Rick Yoder representing Subdivision 4. Director Craig Moody, Subdivision 5. Vice Chairman Barrett is here. I don't know, but he'll, he's in the building. We know that. Uh, represents uh, Subdivision 6 and Director McMine, Subdivision 7. Did you wave? I did. Oh, there you go. A happy wave. And then um, Director Mike Cavanaugh represents Subdivision 8. To my left is President and CEO Tim Burke, of course, and Kim Tracy is our Corporate Secretary down on the end. A uh, few housekeepings. Please silence your phone. Uh, we will stick to the agenda that we have. Uh, there are public comment need, uh, on every issue that we have uh, on the agenda today. Uh, you get three minutes. Please speak to me if you could. Uh, go to the podium and we will be timing you every now and then if, uh, if some directors ask questions. We may extend that, but please keep your remarks to, to three minutes in order to give everybody an equal chance to talk because that can get lengthy as we have more issues on the agenda today may not be a problem, but we stick to a light system and at uh, one minute left it will turn yellow or red. It's not working yellow. again, so oh, I'm it's not manually working. So time Kim will everybody get up today. And give you the wave or I'll give you the wave and get you the oh, She's got a shovel. Yep. So other than that, <laughs> yeah. yes, I think uh, that's all we need. So. Do a safety briefing? Yeah, Tim, would you do a safety <clears throat> briefing? Very good. Uh, you're in the auditorium on our um, uh, on our atrium level of Energy Plaza on the uh, east side of the building over here. Um, so in the event of a fire, we would all exit in the manner in which you entered this room. Uh, we would go down the steps and exit on the 16th Street side of the building. When you use the steps, please make sure you use your three-point touch, uh, one hand on the railing and two feet on the ground. Uh, the fire extinguisher is um, right near the telephone in the hallway um, around the corner as you exit on this door right here. Uh, there's also other fire extinguishers that the OPPD people can assist in um, as well. Um, in the event of uh, a storm and severe weather, since we're uh, heading into that, um, John, I hope you don't give us any bad news on that, but uh, uh, as we head into uh, severe weather, um, we would actually uh, move to the west side of the building and in the garage area. Those folks affiliated with the call center would move to the call center, which is also a secured area uh, as well. If you have a medical condition, please write it down um, or uh, tell your neighbor. Uh, and the AED and the first aid kit, as you would enter into our cafeteria, uh, just to the, um, I'll say to the west uh, of this um, audience auditorium area. Uh, the AD and the first aid kit sit on kind of top of each other on the brick wall. And is anybody here in this room certified in the use of an AED or in CPR? All right, very good. Good OPPD people. All right, very good. Sounds good. Rod, would you call 911 in the event that we need it? Yes. So very good. Um, that concludes my safety briefing. All right, we have an announcement regarding the public notice of this meeting. Notice of the time and place of this meeting was publicized by notifying the area news media by publicizing same in Omaha World Herald and outlets by displaying such notice on the RK level of Energy Plaza since April 4, 2017 and by mailing such notice to each of the district's directors on that same date. A copy of the proposed agenda for this meeting has been maintained on a current basis and is readily available for public inspection in the office of the district's corporate secretary. Additionally, a copy of the open meetings law is available for inspection in the public meeting book located in this meeting room. Agenda item number four, approval of the February 2017 Comprehensive Financial and Operating Report, the March 16, 2017 Board Meeting Minutes, and the April 13, 2017 Agenda. So move. move. Second. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Moody? Yes. Yoder? Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number five, resolution number 6179. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors accepts the monitoring report for Strategic Directive SC11, economic <coughs> development in the form as set forth on Exhibit A attached here to and made a part thereof and finds OPPD to be sufficiently in compliance with the policy as stated. So move. Second. Okay. Um, uh, Mike. Mike. Mr. Chairman, uh, the Public Information Committee uh, reviewed the performance of, of management in the area of, uh, of uh, uh, this particular uh, board policy dealing with you know, e economic uh, development and so forth within the community. And it, I think it's an understatement to say that, uh, that the uh, OBPD is, is a strong partner in the economic development community in the Omaha area. And I th I'm proud of them. They're doing a good job, I think. And 
uh, certainly are in compliance with, with our policy. Certainly are. And before we vote, uh, we do have a guest uh, here, Paul Clements. Paul's the energy manager from Facebook. And would you like to make a few comments to the board? Sure. Thank you for this opportunity. I'll be brief in my comments. I will not time you. Um, <laughs> please do. Uh, so again, my name is Paul Clements. I'm an energy manager at Facebook and was very involved in the process that led to Facebook coming to Papillion and, and being served by OPPD. Just have two items I wanted to address today, and they're both good, and I'll be brief. First, I want to applaud and commend the board for their approval and implementation of Rate Schedule 261M. Uh, that new tariff allows customers like Facebook and other customers to have greater access to renewable energy. And that's a very innovative and forward-thinking uh, tariff that was designed, and we're very appreciative of that and feel like that will help uh, continue economic development for OPPD in the state of Nebraska and applaud your forward-thinking in that regard. Uh, second, I want to make sure the board is aware that the talent level at OPPD is phenomenal. Uh, I was had the opportunity personally to work with many of the staff across all parts of the organization. That includes rate design, economic development, customer service, uh, the trading organization. We worked with dozens of individuals. And the level of industry expertise, the level of customer service, the level of general competency and professionalism is really unprecedented from what I've seen in my experience in the industry. And uh, the level of customer service that was provided to us was just fantastic. And we feel very fortunate as a customer to have this organization behind us. Uh, there are too many people to name individually, but I do want to mention uh, Tim Burke really sets the tone at the top in terms of customer service and energy, meaning go get it done, <laughs> energy. <laughs> and uh, that really permeates through the organization, and we're very appreciative of that. And then, of course, uh, Tim O'Brien really exemplifies customer service at a one-on-one -on -one level. And really, throughout the course of my career, uh, he's one of the individuals that I feel like really sets the bar for customer service. And it's been a privilege working with him and the rest of the team. So you're in good hands as a board. We feel like we're in very good hands as a customer. I think we're, we're close to being a customer. Temporary power is <clears throat> underway. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to a long relationship uh, here in Nebraska. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I just make a comment. Uh, I wish we could have used that three-minute clock when we were in negotiations, actually. So uh, <laughs> that would have been... That would have been really you, you wouldn't have gotten it done. <laughs> Thanks for your comments, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Excellent. Are there any board comments that anybody would like to make? Well, I, I think, go ahead. Oh, I just want to say thank you to Facebook for looking at Papillion and Sarpy County and Nebraska and OPPD. Uh, we're glad you're here. Welcome. So. Okay. Also, uh, well, I'd just comment as chairman of the board, of course, too. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's an exciting adventure for everybody, and we really appreciate it. I'm a Papillion resident, so that's, uh, that's great news. I know they're doing a great job. But, I really appreciate your comments on our team, um, and I'd just like to extend the comments to not only the economic development team, but you'll find out as you go along, the whole organization is very good, customer-focused, public power. That's why it's what we're supposed to be doing, so that's great uh, for you to say that and give us a little shout-out. We really appreciate it. Um, we love working with uh, Tim and his team, and I agree. He's kind of energizer bunny, and that does trickle down because they're all working very hard. So we'll leave it at that. So congratulations to the OPPD team. And I know there's another team, the Chamber of Commerce and everybody else as well, and uh, appreciate the nice comments on the rate structure. That was innovative, and uh, very we're very proud of that. So. With that, last call. Anybody from the board? No. All right. Any public comment? Do we need public comment on this? Any public comment? I don't see any. All right. We'll Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Moody? Yes. Yoder? <clears throat> yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number six, resolution number 6180. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors approves the recommended revisions to Board Policy BL12, delegation to the President and Chief Executive Officer, transmission, wholesale electricity, fuel, and other energy transactions in the form as set forth on Exhibit A, attached hereto, effective April 13th, 2017. 
Okay, Director Hurley's not here. Do you want to handle this? Well, actually, that would be systems, oh, which I'm would sorry, be. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Director yeah. Yoder. I'll be happy to chime in, but you've got the floor. Uh, no, you go right ahead. <laughs> oh, you've got the floor. That's fine. <laughs> go ahead. Um, I was taken unaware. So, uh, absolutely, um, I, the resolution uh, is this is something that uh, on the board policy. Hey, Rick, first off, we, we need a motion and a second before we. Oh, is that what I'm doing? Yes, yeah, so yeah. move. Oh, okay. So I move. Second. I second. Yeah. Go ahead. Now you can go. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Now I got to talk? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a policy that uh, just uh, defines authority that we are already uh, have, um, and so I encourage. Who can I turn this over to? Yeah, why don't Why don't I just take it to, to begin with? This is uh, authority for us to be able to use um, uh, hedging transaction future transaction around e energy and energy commodities, um, really as a as part of our toolkit. Um, to look at um, reducing risk, uh, to increasing price stability, uh, which all fits very well with our strategic directives and, and other linkage documents as well. Um, we're asking not for uh, the authority to do that. We have the authority to do that, but in our conversations um, with folks, um, vendors around uh, this topic, uh, it allows us the opportunity to make sure the wording fits with their needs as well. Um, and so this is just a modification of the current authority that we have to Today that gives us and our partners in this uh, potential vendors uh, that we we would utilize uh, in in this process. Uh, it gives them the comfort feeling and the um, obligation of the board to give us that authority as a, as a management team to execute uh, these kinds of strategies. So uh, this is really a, a great opportunity for us. It puts another kind of arrow in our quiver uh, and gives us the opportunity to uh, reduce price stability in our commodities <laughs> that we utilize, whether it's electricity or natural gas or or other. Uh, fuels uh, and services as well. Yeah, and I would like to add that we had a very robust uh, discussion today about this and about the role between uh, finance uh, dealing with this and putting in uh, oversight for this to make sure it runs well, but also to take it into perspective, we only have a small amount of energy that would be hedged at this time because we utilize most of our energy. So it's, it's a small amount, but still at the same time, we asked uh, Ms. Monroe to give us a, a, a long discussion about how uh, she and her team and the, uh, you know do oversight and also have the audit with us. So I don't know if anyone would like us to repeat that. It might be a good idea to, to talk a little bit because uh, Warren Buffett used to say that our derivatives can be uh, weapons of financial mass destruction, but I don't think this is what we're working about. We're working about stability here as far as our uh, energy cost. If you can come and maybe mention a little bit what we've... Okay, thank you, Director McGuire. So um, what I explained this morning was that in support of, of BL-12, we have a risk management policy that um, sets limits and, and defines how we'll evaluate these transactions and how we'll record these transactions. And it limits the, the, the transactions to a small piece, small, small piece of our energy. Um, so we will evaluate how, how much energy we're short or how much energy we're over. And that's the amount that they can hedge. And they can hedge, in the current year, only 80% of that over or under amount. So it's, it's a limited piece. Um, as Mr. Burke said, this is a financial s s uh, stability piece that will uh, ensure price security. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mr. Medrano. All right, good job. The only other thing from this morning's conversation is that Troy did an excellent job in presenting this. Yes, he did. Gave us confidence that he has a good history on this. Um, and so we aren't moving into some unknown area. No. It's, we've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I owe you an apology, Director Hurley, not being here. After I did throw you a tough one. <laughs> anyway, thanks. Thanks. For it's that. okay. It's best just have ten. Anyway. I was I was still trying to figure out how to talk to Facebook since they're in my district. That's right. <laughs> I think there'll be that opportunity. Right. Oh, good. So. All right. Any public comment on this? John Pollock, 1412 North 35th Street, Omaha. Uh, I appreciate that uh, you're on the stable side of the uh, hedging, or at least that's your intention, so that uh, 
uh, rather than taking some kind of speculative position, you're trying to stabilize prices. Uh, what I wonder about are the institutional controls to keep somebody from uh, having exerting irrational exuberance in the future. We have to discuss that. <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> this is part of our robust discussion, so we'll yeah. be happy to. <laughs> so, um, Troy, uh, Mr. Vice area will actually um, be the person that uh, the group that originates the transactions. The accounting and auditing staff will have oversight and uh, record and evaluate those transactions. As I said, there's a very limited amount that they will have available to to hedge, and we will watch that on on a uh, continual basis. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, it does allow multiple people's approval in the process, so not not one person. Uh, as my senior team would say, no CEO can go rogue on this, uh, right? Uh, to Julie's point yesterday, uh, different conversation. So uh, we have multiple checkpoints and, and, and authority approvals to be able to do that. Any other public comment? I don't see any. Go ahead. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Moody? Yes. Yoder? Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number seven, resolution number 6181. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors accepts the monitoring reports for GP 1 through 14 and BL 1 through 6, substantially in the form as set forth on Exhibit A and Exhibit B, respectively, attached hereto and made a part thereof. So, as chair of the committee, uh, and, and just to let everyone know that we have 15 governance processes uh, by which this board operates, uh, and each year we review those, those processes, and uh, this year they were sent out to the board in, in February to review and provide feedback, uh, and uh, we, we then analyzed it uh, internally. They analyzed it in March and April. Again, reviewed those processes uh, today, and there's there are some some of the processes where there are questions by board members, and and uh, those will be addressed. We we plan to have a uh, uh, an in depth discussion during a board policy workshop in July. Uh, so this was presented to the board today for discussion, and now we're looking for a confirmation by the board that uh, that we adopt the policies with the understanding that we'll have uh, revisions uh, to discuss in our July board meeting. <coughs> so moved. Well, yeah, oh. a motion and a second. We didn't get a motion and a second. We need a second. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Motion. Need a motion motion for approval. So I move the, that we approve the policies. Thank you. Second. All right. Any board discussion? Uh, I would. Uh, I just want to underscore uh, something that Mick said, which is we um, there was a lot that we kind of left um, on the table for discussion in July uh, when we reviewed this. There were, were several comments that I think will that just we just weren't going to hash out today, right? Uh, so I think generally speaking, um, it makes good sense that we are in compliance with all of them except uh, I think two. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we'll have some fun discussions in July around some of these, thinking about really kind of how we can enhance and improve uh, going forward. But yeah, and I think it's important when we first establish these policies that we, everybody realizes it's a living document that it's always, uh, there's always going to be time for change. Uh, this is a sign of a robust board to look at these and Absolutely. to evaluate and to fine tweak them. Uh, and I think we're going to have Eric Douglas come out and uh, be our moderator for that to help us through this, and I think it's a, a great thing. And this will continue to happen about every couple of years or so. Now, I appreciate um, what Director Mines referred to earlier about the process we've already gone through, the survey, we've already looked at things. We've made some short-term changes that yep. um, administratively changes, yeah. that already. So I do look forward to the discussion in July. <laughs> And that is open to the public, by the way. Yeah. And I'd be, by the way, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Scott Foch and, yep. and Kim Tracy for their coordination and, and administration of this board policy. Yep. They've done a great job. Yep. And before before we move on on that, then too, there are a lot of things to discuss. I know we have one day right now planned, but after <laughs> seeing this, you know, I'm going to run it by you. 
either we're going to have to limit time on this or, <laughs> oh, or no. stretch it to whatever. We'll have to figure it out. But I did want to also three give... Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, three minutes. Everyone gets three minutes. <laughs> but uh, I would like to bring attention, though. I brought this up earlier to somebody, but uh, Director McGuire really started this from where we've been. Um, the idea of doing board policies and being a much more formal, and efficient board uh, really Thank goes you. to Anne. She that. brought that to our attention, and we've been working on it over the years. And yeah, it's there's always it's a work in progress, living document. Uh, so, but I think it's a good thing. Yeah, these are guidelines that we try to stick to, but I don't know if it's the old, you know, it is what it is. These are guidelines we stick to. So uh, as changes happen, but anyway, and you deserve credit on Thank this. You. I think it's a good Appreciate thing. That. And the new board members, and like I say, I mean, some of us are only four years going into the fifth year. You've had a little more experience, but this is a good training model too for us, all of us to have a good conversation. So I'm just warning you right now, it could be like a day or a day and a half from all the things <laughs> I've seen. So uh, I think that's fair. So with that, I'll shut up. Good healthy discussion. Yes, exactly. That's good. Yeah. Uh, with that, I'll shut up. Any uh, public discussion on this? I don't see any. Go ahead, Kim. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yeah. Moody? Yes. Yoder? Yes. Motion carried. And now for the president's report. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we have a, a couple things going on, um, obviously, at the district. You know, from the generation side, our Nebraska City 2 uh, plant has uh, begun a 45-day outage uh, a little over a week or so ago uh, to replace the uh, high, high pressure of the HPIP uh, turbine router that was damaged uh, a, a couple years ago. Uh, John and his team uh, have done just an excellent job of working through, one, the modification of that so we could get that plant back up and running a couple of years ago in a relatively short period of time, uh, but also on the replacement and the, and the cost around that. So uh, congratulations to John and his team that, that worked very hard uh, on that. A kind of a line uh, around that as well, we continue with our, our lean fossil uh, generation cost and process improve, uh, excuse me, improvement initiative uh, really to focus in on um, station uh, operations and maintenance practices and reduce cost. Uh, we also had a conversation today about kind of our generation um, portfolio, but we're really trying to identify ways to reduce costs to improve that margin opportunity that actually helps customers uh, and helps us to maintain uh, rates and the stability of those rates. Uh, so that work is going on not only in John's group, uh, but in other parts of the organization. And I'll highlight those as we continue uh, that work as well. And then uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier in our committee meeting, but the farmers, the Midwest Farmers Co-op facility was built on the OPPD Arbor Line. Many people don't know that we actually own a, 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 a a rail line uh, that goes from Nebraska City to Lincoln. Um, and we've used that in part by uh, negotiating with, with rail and, and coal um, uh, inventories and, and contracts, and, and it served us incredibly well. Uh, but a couple of years ago, a team made up of our generation folks and economic development and others uh, really looked at that as an economic development asset. And so how do we how do we engage around that asset to create economic development? So the Midwest Farmers Co-op has built their facility, uh, and uh, they'll be receiving their first grain train um, uh, next week. So uh, my guess is uh, that'll be great for that uh, uh, you know community and uh, region. Uh, as well, not only for the agricultural community, but for the employment community around Syracuse, Nebraska. Um, so we're anxious to to see that begin. Again, another uh, kind of combination of a multiple groups uh, across OPPD going together and creating economic value for the uh, for the region. And a kind of our focus around safety today is a uh, is a gentleman by the name of John Broderick. He was a substation operator. Uh, he died on June 22nd, 1953, after coming in contact with the 240-volt line in a substation near 18th and Grant Street in Omaha. He was 30 years old and been with OPPD for seven years at the time of his death. Uh, he was survived by his wife, Shirley Ann, two daughters, Pe Peggy Ann, Jacqueline Kay, and son, John Thomas. And for some of uh, the new folks that haven't been at our board meeting before, we do try to highlight kind of the reason why our focus is, is to be a, a top safety performer across the region. Last year, we had our best performing safety year in 70 year history at OPPD, and it's part of that commitment around safety. But these are um, kind of our memorials that we share across our um, organization, just to remind us about the serious nature of our work uh, and our commitment to employee safety um, across uh, OPPD. 
Last month, we had a variety of folks uh, that came to speak uh, to the board and, and to the management team uh, from the Elkhorn Valley Transmission uh, Project and from the Missouri Transmission Project. Uh, one of the commitments that we made uh, to those individuals and to the board was that we would make sure that we would follow up with each individual um, uh, landowner who spoke and identified <coughs> Uh, concerns, challenges, issues, uh, and at and, uh, least opportunities for us to, to work uh, further with them. Um, I want to let the uh, audience know uh, and the folks here in the auditorium uh, that we did make contact with every single one of those individuals. Uh, we were only not able to make contact, uh, although we left a telephone message. Uh, um, we, we had contact with every customer except for one where we had to leave a telephone message. But well, we followed up with each of those uh, customers um, in a letter form to answer any of their questions questions or concerns that they may have and many of those resolutions that were identified or concerns that were identified have been resolved um, and will continue to make those contacts and, and, and provide that customer contact to those customers that are uh, impacted by that. Uh, the board also received kind of a detailed review of each customer's concern and kind of the mitigation strategies that we've laid in place uh, for them to have a, a, a deeper knowledge on the concern or the issue. So just want to make sure uh, the audience knew that we've kind of followed that back up. Um, also, uh, we, we did a, a, a presentation today um, in closed session about the stakeholder process and also about condemnation, but the stakeholder process will be on the OPPD uh, website uh, on both of these projects so you can see the extent in which we uh, did receive uh, stakeholder, customer, landowner input uh, in the line location process uh, and kind of where we are to date in, in each of those projects. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll just leave that, but I want to make sure we followed up and, and concluded um, that item as well. On the uh, T&D side, um, field installations are nearing uh, completion on our smart grid, kind of our phase one. Our phase one is really kind of our pilot project. Um, we are currently in the process of implementing the logic automation, which is currently taking place uh, right now and today. Uh, the smart devices will automatically restore unfaulted segments in this phase one area. It's about a four mile, uh, four square mile area in the northeast part of the city where we could really test communication capability in a heavily treed area as well as certainly in a heavily treed area. Uh, you see more um, squirrels, uh, tree, limb damage during storms and wind, and it's a great opportunity for us to test those systems. Um, so we believe uh, certainly this will help reduce outages by some of the automatic uh, restoration of those um, unfaulted segments and so we'll see that the value and opportunity of that. We're also partnering with the City of Omaha as a customer in this area as well as several other OPPD employees in the phase one area uh, assisting uh, us with some of the advanced metering pilot and that's really an opportunity for us to get feedback from the City of Omaha who has multiple installations in that service area as well as employees that are located in that area to give us feedback before we begin to think about what that long-term recommendation is on our smart grid rollout. Uh, Mohammed Dogman and his team uh, that have been rolling through this pilot project have done a great job of, of setting us up. Our plan would be, uh, even though this project will go live in the fall of 2017, we'll probably come back in the spring and the March, April timeframe to kind of give a kind of a, a six month review on kind of what we've seen, what we know, what we've experienced, and uh, potentially maybe what our long term strategy may look like. Um, and give that presentation to the board. It really is uh, important for us as we begin to think about you know, what, the, what this integrated energy marketplace, as we've termed, uh, is gonna look like in the future, and this will be critical to that um, as we begin to think about that strategic initiative. And though I hate to think about storm season, um, but uh, obviously um, our, our T&D and transmission distribution system uh, has performed incredibly well over the last month, um, and we continue to have high reliability indices um, across all uh, areas of that. But it is storm season, uh, and that's approaching, and so our OPPD storm restoration team members are reviewing their plans, responsibilities, and preparation for potential large, large storms. And so what we have done over the course of the years have done table tops and full drills around that storm preparation. There's been several emails that have kind of gone out over the last several months just reminding our folks, 
review your uh, storm outage plans and be ready to provide um, uh, as part of a member of the storm team uh, that respective work. And so uh, we encourage all customers in the event of an outage uh, to be informed of the outage and you can go on the OPPD website, um, oppd.com or our storm uh, outage center um, and you can go on our website and, and see what that certainly looks like. But also to make sure that um, if you encounter um, electrical hazards that may be in the street or in your backyard or wherever that may be, to make sure that you uh, call the appropriate authorities and, and certainly OPPD will come and, and provide that um, safety restoration or at least that safety work to prevent um, any hazards in the field. Uh, and Many customers don't know the difference between a cable line and electrical line, and so if any of those happen to fall on your car, if something hits a pole, something falls down, stay in your vehicle. There's a variety of other safety and helpful tips online at OPPD.com and on our storm center uh, that can, can give customers some great safety awareness uh, during these storm seasons. And lastly, uh, during the month of March, numerous activities were held to celebrate the month of women. And so we collected a variety of pop tabs. And for those of you that know that I like Mountain Dew, uh, they, they, they did well last month for me, um, uh, for the Ronald McDonald House. And what they have done is collect enough pop tabs to essentially uh, pay for uh, the electric bills at Ronald McDonald for a whole year. And so this has been a community project, but our uh, women's organization, the OPPD Women's Network, uh, really took this on as a project. Members of our uh, women's network also provided home-cooked meals to families staying at the Ronald McDonald House. And also we had two lunch and learns. Uh, for uh, the members of our women's network. Uh, one was held on fossil plant basics, just the understanding of our generation, our generation fleet, and the other one was on confidence. And so it's a part of our uh, ongoing commitment to our employee resource groups uh, to make sure that we, again, prepare them, educate them, uh, and allow them the opportunity to be engaged in our operations here at OPPD. Uh, and with that, that concludes the uh, President's report. All right, thanks, Tim. And just uh, also, Tim, uh, just a thanks to the Mo Dogman and his team, the transmission team, and, and these transmission projects get very difficult. We do our best, but last month we did have uh, people come in. The board, is, at general, uh, took their their comments to heart. We had a good conversation on it, on what we're doing. It will be posted on the website. But uh, anyway, just again, you know, um, I was telling Paul up here, public power, that's kind of what we're, we do. I thought I was very proud of the board, quite honestly, yeah. to have that conversation. It's a good conversation, looking out for those customers. You can't please everybody, we know that, but doing our best to try to do the best we can. But anyway, I thought that was a very good conversation today. Uh, we don't take comments lightly. Uh, we can't follow up on everything, but uh, on those important land things and eminent domain issues, very important, and we take them that way. So hopefully people will visit that website. There's a lot of great things on there Absolutely. too, by the way, especially with the storm season. So that, any other board comments? I will right, turn it over. Any public comments? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering, is that going, David? <laughs> David Corbin, 1002 North 49th Street, representing the Nebraska Sierra Club. First, I'd like to welcome Facebook. And in the spirit of having Facebook, as in the past, I've said, you know, if you want people that can't make it to the meetings at this time, use Facebook Live. Let them, t let them put in their questions and have a time, this time at the end, for a few of those questions for people. Who, who can't be here. I want to thank uh, also OPPD for sponsoring the uh, workshop kind of focus group that we've had. And my understanding is that there'll be more to try to talk about how to develop uh, community solar. Uh, in terms of the smart meters, I hope someday, I think some businesses would like to be able to have time of day prices so that maybe they're charging uh, forklifts or something and if they do it at night it would be a lot cheaper if they do it that way. Uh, and uh, right now the SEAL Club is involved in, in many things related to Keystone XL Pipeline, the Public Service Commission and all that so we've got a lot going on but uh, I, I, w I would be remiss if I don't as I do in every meeting, to say, <laughs> when will we have a report on the Green Fund? It's coming, Dave. It's coming. Your, your, your persistency is great. So we'll, uh, Thank you. We will have that. I, I would just say uh, business customers do have the capability uh, to have uh, time of use pricing on rates today. They have that capability today. Um, so it isn't necessarily 
necessary on the um, on the time of day uh, or on the smart meter, so to speak. With our current metering, we do have um, on and off peak uh, capability, or at least um, uh, rates that we provide that capability today. And that's on. communicated well. Oh, with that? Yeah, sure. Because uh, some of the we've been working with some nonprofits like. Uh, Food Bank of the Heartland, they too didn't small. seem to know. That well, and, and that very well, and they may be too small to be able to do that, where they may not have a demand meter or their demand may not be high right. enough to really impact so, that. And typically on, on those customers, what we found is that time of use really isn't beneficial for them. But um, we're, we're looking about expanding out on our, our kind of uh, business contact program, as we've talked about our customer experience strategy, uh, to get more of that communication uh, to those. But that is available. And, and we have a variety of meetings that we talk about those things with a variety of you know, business kind of customers. So just to clarify, I, I thought I heard you say the business uh, customers can do that now, and then I heard there was a size uh, well, floor or threshold. It, it's really based on whether or not they have a demand meter or not uh, and some of those changes, but we have um, those uh, kind of uh, time of use rates available for customers today. Dependent on, yeah. So available, but only actionable if they're meeting. I, I, think, I think it's available for them today. Uh, what we would do is some analysis around that, probably with a demand meter that would allow them to see what that would look like. And, and in some cases, it's not beneficial for them to do yeah. that. It's if, not cost effective. If a majority of their operation is during the eight to five hour, sure. it isn't. So if they have a back office or a, or if they have a operation or some needs very similar to what Mr. Corbin said, they have a large load in the off peak, then there's some value and benefit for them. Thank you. So. Alan Bavoka, 3719 Hamilton. Uh, congratulations on the Facebook deal. 100% renewable energy. I'm glad that you've proven that it's technically feasible. And I'm very keenly aware that it's not just Facebook who wants to have 100% clean energy at their either residence or place of business. So glad you're getting your feet wet and let me know the minute it's available for my house. <laughs> John Pollock, 1412 North 35th Street. Uh, I would uh, echo some of uh, Alan's comments here. Uh, as far as the weather goes, uh, we're uh, looking fairly benign for the next, uh, oh, next week or two, which is as far as we can go out this time of year. Uh, the overall pattern has been uh, kind of a split storm track, and we've been in the middle and not been heavily affected by either branch. Uh, that will probably continue the next week to 10 days. Uh, however, what we need to watch, so far we've got a carryover from the winter pattern where we had a, a, a storm generation area off the west coast of the U.S., kind of a, a trough. Uh, all oh, about 130 to 140 degrees west. And the storms that were kicking out of that were kind of weakening as they came into the middle of the country. As long as we keep that configuration, that tends to put a lid on our severe weather. If that trough were to move on the west coast or inland, then it's a completely different story. Then we're in the uh, spring uh, shooting gallery <coughs> pattern where uh, where moisture keeps getting pulled from the Gulf and cold air from the north, and we get a much more active severe weather season. There really isn't a good way to foretell uh, whether we'll uh, have a transition to that kind of pattern or not. So I'm not going to uh, make a guesstimate, but I appreciate the public preparedness is good. Uh, part of my personal campaign is to encourage people uh, not to grow silver maples. Those are <laughs> the very worst to everything. I tell people, if you want, if you want a tree that is uh, guaranteed to fall apart on your house and wiring in 40 or 50 years, and you consider that an important part of your legacy, then go ahead and plant a silver maple. Otherwise, we've got a lot of other good selections. Thank you. Uh, John, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, when will the, what's your prediction on when the last hard freeze will be and will we see any snow uh, this spring? I think that we will not see snow and for the Omaha area, we are done with hard freezes. 
It looks like uh, we had that uh, uh, cold morning the other day. Uh, that, I don't really see a repeat of that pattern in the next uh, 10 days or so. And then after that, we're getting kind of late in the season to do it. So it's not inconceivable, of course, but uh, it's looking pretty favorable. I'm thinking of uh, starting to put some of my house plants outside in the next few days. And if I'm wrong, I'll be carrying them back. So I just assume <laughs> that the board right. that labor. Thank you, John. On that positive note, we'll adjourn. All right. Let's get planning.